to the village, he was met by ten leopards, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, Were not ten cleansed, and where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go on your way, for your faith has made you we may enter upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things that are well-pleasing unto thee. For thou art the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God, and unto thee do we ascribe glory, together with thy Father, is from everlasting, and thine all holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. It says that in Holy Scripture. That's actually David, the psalmist, speaking. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Why is that? Because the Lord dwells in his house. It's his house. He dwells here. He dwells here. And we can sense that, we can see that, we can hear that. Because when we walk in, we feel it. We can feel that. In our generation, feeling is very important. It wasn't so important in other generations. But in, you know, cultures change, and the emphasis on things change. That's why we have, sometimes have a hard, hard time to understand what the scripture means in this instance or in that. But for us, you know, sensing the presence of God is very important. Actually, it's very important in every generation. And when you walk into the house of the Lord, you sense his presence. If you sense his presence, it means that your heart is oriented towards him. It does. Because if your heart was not oriented towards him, you wouldn't sense his presence. Your orientation would be such that you wanted to push away the light. And if you wanted to push away the light, well, then you wouldn't bother coming to church, would you? Because it's in the church, it's the locus, it's, it's the focus, it's the center point of where we begin our journey with God. And also the one, it's also the place through which and by which that journey grows. But there's another, there's another attitude that we have to cultivate. Now that begins in baptism, forgive my last sentence, that begins in baptism and it's entirely the work of Christ. Because when we're baptized, we're baptized into his death and we're raised in the likeness of his resurrection and he gives us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the very power of God and the Holy Spirit can dwell on you and the Holy Spirit can dwell in you. And it's also the place where we receive the Holy Eucharist, the very body and blood of Christ, the very life of Christ. And that comes, how? Um, that comes again because of this orientation towards him. We must have that. That's our part. We don't save ourselves, but Christ doesn't save us against our will. We really are free beings. We really are. And our freedom is so radical that we can even turn our back on our creator. <coughs> and some people do. It doesn't mean that that decision doesn't have consequences. It has great 
consequences, great ramifications, especially for the soul and also for the mind. But again, the gift of salvation, and it is a gift, comes without any preconditions, but it must be received. It is never imposed. It never is. And that's why, <coughs> that's why the Lord rejoices at repentance and at confession. That's why. Because the repentance, metanea, the, 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 the turning of, of, of the mind, it's really the opening of the noose inside, the opening of the heart, the turning of the mind, our, 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 our complete orientation. Whenever that turns more towards the Lord, the Lord himself rejoices because his gift is going to be received. He's a God of great mercy. He really is. But the freedom will never be violated. Our freedom will never be violated. It's a very radical thing when you think about it. We can turn our backs on the Lord. We can. We can. That doesn't truncate God's mercy towards us, but what it does do is we step outside of where that mercy can apply. So the orientation towards him is very, very important. Part of that orientation is gratitude. Gratitude. Be grateful for what you have. This, the saying says, count your blessings. Do that. Count your blessings. Because when you count your blessings, you know what you discover? <coughs> There's a lot more light there than what you're seeing. It's very easy to focus on the hardships. It's very easy to focus on the grievances. And it's very easy, and this is the most difficult experience in human life, it really is, it's very easy to focus on betrayal. Very easy to focus on these things. And our orient orientation towards the Lord will change to, Lord, why aren't you doing this stuff for me? Lord, why did this happen? And we get angry. Sometimes we get self-centered. Oftentimes we get lost. We get lost because we don't see the hand of the Lord anymore. But there's a very simple antidote to that, and that is to count your blessings and be grateful. Look for the good. It's very important, especially when things are difficult. Look for the good. And you'll see that your life is not as dark as it feels, and we've all been there, and you all know what I'm talking about. And when you begin to see the light, and you begin to see, you know, God has blessed me here, and God has blessed me here, and God has blessed me over there, the orientation changes, the eyes open up, and you see that even though there's darkness, there's also a whole lot of light. And when you begin walking in that light, that power and that grace and that mercy, all those things that God seeks to give you, that was started in your baptism, becomes accessible again. It really does. There were ten lepers. They were healed. Nine of them did not come back to Jesus except the foreigner, it says in Holy Scripture. Well, what does this mean, the foreigner? He was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan. So the other, the other nine lepers were Jews. And Jesus told them, do what it says in Holy Scripture to do if you have le leprosy. Go and show yourselves to the priests, and the prayer of the priest can heal you. That's what it says in the Old Testament. And Jesus, remember, he lived in Old Testament times. So 
So even though he was the son of God, even though he was the author of the law, he told them, obey the law, because through the obeying of the law, you will be healed, and they did. Although it says what happened to them is that their healing came not when they saw the priest, but when they were on the way to the priest. So the healing, there's something that's subtle that's very important. The healing occurred in obedience to his word, to his instruction, and to his commandment. But there was one, there was one, he was a foreigner, he was a Samaritan. The Samaritans were the ones who polluted, even prostituted the very tradition of the fathers. And they were outcasts, even though they, they, they came from Israel, they were outcast by the children of Israel because of their pollution, their distorting, the really, it, 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 it was a heresy, you could say, of, of the tradition of the prophets. It was still him who came back to thank Jesus for the healing that Jesus gave them, and that is the one who received the blessing and the honor from the Lord himself. Is this important? Yes, it's important, because think of all the times in Scripture you hear the word Samaritan. The good Samaritan, the Samaritan woman, the leper who was healed was a Samaritan, right? They were all foreigners. They cut themselves off from the commonwealth of Israel, yet because of their faith in Christ, even though they were cut off, they still received the healing and the blessing from God. And the Samaritan responded in return by coming back and giving him his gratitude for what he had done. If we do that, I promise you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I've tested it, it's really true. It's really true. If we cultivate that attitude of gratitude, seeing the good in all things in your life, in the person you might be having trouble with. If we cultivate that, we enable the Lord to do his work. And we also orient ourselves to walk in his power. So through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, may the Lord have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Amen. Please rise.